All righty, good morning. All right, so welcome to the recognition ceremony for the Mercury Atlas 9 project. My name is JC Snedeker, I'm the chief of special events, uh, and I will be your narrator for today's event. Uh, at this time, would you guys please stand for the playing of our national anthem? Thank you. All right, I would like to introduce our first speaker, the director of the National Museum of the United States Air Force, Mr. David Tillotson. So I have good news for you. There's only two speakers. So you, we're not, that, not gonna take that long, but I wanted to take some time. And we're not doing an exhibit opening. The exhibit has been, it's hard to hide this thing. So once it went up, uh, actually, I shouldn't even say that. As it went up, it was a major spectator activity. Uh, in fact, it became a spectator activity as, as it was being transported down the highway from Akron area. Um, we did get reports um, from the Ohio State Patrol, uh, Ohio State Patrol cameras and everything else. So there is no hiding this particular exhibit. Um, we've been waiting for it for a while. But I wanted to talk about it and I also wanted to take a moment to thank some folks who had a lot to do with this because this has been uh, probably as much of a journey as the original Atlas program. Um, and it took um, a requisite series of steps and miracles in order for this to happen. When I first got here, um, the staff um, didn't know me well enough and made a, a series of huge mistakes, the first of which was to let me look in all the corners of all the buildings. And I see several people going, yep, yeah, I remember that because it promptly resulted in a, um, a, a burst of good fairy ideas, idea fairy releases to uh, perhaps things we might consider doing. And looking through the missile gallery at the time, one of the things I noticed is that there is a story here, although not well told, about the Air Force and its role not just in defense, but also in space. And we didn't really have, uh, we have one exhibit that does it, it's the missile that's behind you, uh, but we didn't have the one that talked about the interaction with the space program. And so looking around the restoration building, I, f I saw a bunch of Atlas parts. And so in the first mistake, Roger Deere and Nick Almeter were walking around with me and we started brainstorming and said, what can we do with this? Is there a way to make this work? And Roger said, it will take a lot of work. It probably is gonna be a little bit beyond our reach. Great, do we know anybody that might do work? And he said, I know a guy. <laughs> and so we started with uh, and reached out to the Tomarius company and they said, yes, we've actually done something like this before. And we have the form lines for a mercury capsule and we might consider doing this. I'm not sure they knew what they were getting into at the time. This was not a well-formed atlas that we were handing them. And then a series of other miracles had to occur. We had to get it done and it had to come back down. We had to fit it through that garage door behind you and stand it up. And that took several more miracles. And now it's here. And it's here as the cornerstone, the foundation stone 
for a major exhibit revision that will take place from that portion of the missile gallery or the entry to the missile gallery all the way through this gallery that basically reshapes our presentation to the public and this exhibit behind me will be the foundation and cornerstone of that. So all of you who worked on that are actually the um, folks to whom we're going to say thank you today. Um, this is a significant effort. Um, it took a lot of work. I'm going to miss some. I'm going to miss some uh, names and people. But the first person. I, and by the way, if you're a government person, I'm going to give you a hearty high O silver. But if you're not a government person, and Roger, technically you're not a government person anymore, so Roger, come on down. I have a thank you for you, as the and and you can either take credit or blame for starting this in motion. Uh, let's see. So as I said, Roger said, I know a guy. So do I have John and Thomas Tomarios here? You're hiding back there. I saw one Tomarios badge. Yes, come on. Nice try. <laughs> I know there's at least one of you. I think there's two of you. So. Thank you. So, I know you guys bit off a lot more. <laughs> These guys bit off a lot more than they thought. And not only that, as soon as we gave them the rocket, um, COVID set in, labor issues set in, exactly. labor hiring set in. So for everybody who thinks this took a long time, the answer is it actually did not by comparison. This was a huge lift uh, by a company that did a really outstanding job uh, with a bunch of of good guidance and you can't imagine um, how much I know Nick and the team that kept going up there visiting periodically came back and said they are making progress it is a much bigger lift than we thought it was going to be so I just need to tell you um, how grateful we are and how impressed we are with the product that you guys produce uh, because uh, it's been an attraction since it's been here trust me we're blocking people from seeing it right now but people have been staring at it ever since it came in. So oh, I have been staring at it for a long time myself. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll probably be glad to, glad to be staring at it here as opposed to in your workshop. Sure. So anyway, to your company, thank you so much. I appreciate your, all the work that you guys did. If you want to say anything, please do. I don't know what to say. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'd like to thank everyone for, for the opportunity to even do the project. It's hard and long as it took. Um, you know, it's... Uh, It's good to accomplish something. You know? It is. And it's, again, it's going to be a key to our, our major revision of this gallery. So it will be here forever with recognition to your company. So thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so we uh, chose a configuration um, to make this missile in. Um, and the next person I'm going to recognize, but I'm sorry you're a government employee so you don't get a gift, is Doug Lantry. Doug, come on down. I know, what the heck did, yeah, sure. <laughs> so what did Doug have to do with this? Well, Doug, Doug was the uh, markings and insignia Nazi for this project. In fact, when the missile finally came down here, the only question I heard from Doug was, does it have the atmosphere spike? Yes, it does, Doug, don't panic, it's there. It actually was built in. So um, he took a lot of time and effort working with the company to make sure that this looked like we picked the missile and the capsule to mark Gordon Cooper's last Mercury mission. So that's what this is. He was the only Air Force Mercury astronaut to actually fly in orbit. Um, so we chose that for our design and uh, it was on Doug to make sure this looked right. Um, so again, I think it came out well and thank you so much. So the next thing that had to happen is while this missile is undergoing renovation, there was this small problem of how do you get this missile, which has to come in in one piece, minus the, the capsule and the docking and the adapter collar and all that stuff that could be stacked on top. But this is a very long missile. When it came in, it basically ran, as you can see from the video that was running earlier, from the case up there all the way down to kind of where you're sitting. And then we had to figure out how to stand it up. 
And so Nick Allmeter and his team took the time to design a base that could be put on the missile that would, would allow it to be hoisted into place and, and move, move slowly along while we man managed to make that happen. And so Nick, come on up. I, I told you you weren't gonna be able to hide in the back. It's a nice try. If you wanna bring your team with you, please do. If it's a misery loves company moment. <laughs> come on up here. So they not only designed the base, but if you look at the video as it gets presented, um, I talked to Nick and the team as they were doing the install and the other thing they were extremely grateful for at the end was getting out of the baskets. They were hanging in those baskets for two days, um, attaching pieces. So the time-lapse video makes it look easy. We will not discuss the number of, of repeat exercises we went through as they fit a custom-made piece of kit all together so that it actually uh, will hold together in one piece. But Nick and his team, as usual, uh, did a brilliant job and I think it looks great. So, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, Nick's, Nick's going, no, I'm not doing that. Nick had to find a partner to do this. Um, and I'm not sure what was the more impressive part of this, the lift itself, or getting the giant crane out of the building. Believe it or not, after the missile gets stood up, the crane is sitting over there, and they had to drive it around this corner and get it back out. And it's a crane that's tall enough to do. So, uh, Travis Kemp, I told you you can't sit in the back. <laughs> Travis, Travis Kemp and his team from Capital City Cranes are the folks that actually did the lift of all the pieces and made that go together. This was a non-trivial exercise to say the least. So they are partnering with Nick's team are the ones that actually got this in place. So thank you so thank much. You. You So the next trick at the end of the day is, okay, so we had this plan, we had a way to do this, we thought we had a way to do this, and then we had this minor problem of paying for it. Ooh, there's a challenge. And interestingly enough, two-thirds of it was paid for by the museum, courtesy of Luke Liming and the work he did on the exchange program. So Luke, come on down. It's the reason I wanted you here. So Luke, uh, through the exchange program, raised two-thirds of the money it took for actually for us to do this install. So. And the balance of the program was funded by a donor who will not be named, but was found through the good offices of Chris Adkins Lamb and the Air Force Museum Foundation development team. And they found a donor who was willing to fund the balance of the, um, uh, in the installation and the project. So Chris, I'm gonna ask you to come up and say a few words and I'll turn it over to you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Well, good morning, everyone. It's truly my pleasure to welcome you this morning uh, on behalf of the Air Force Museum Foundation. Uh, and to begin, I would like to echo the congratulations that Mr. Tillotson just offered uh, to everyone that was involved in this project. Um, this atlas uh, is a shining example of uh, the excellence of the work of the museum and its partners. Uh, and we, the foundation, are just absolutely delighted um, to have played a, a, we think, a meaningful but small part uh, in what took place and, and, in, and what is literally standing behind me. Before I go any further, though, I'd like to know who I should give my chiropractor bill to because when I came back here to look at the atlas for the first time and Ben actually saw me back here, I stood back here for about 20 minutes looking up at it and I walked all around it and I got a crick in my neck. So I'm not sure where that bill needs to go, but I'll be looking for that person. Maybe you're here, um, and I'll pass that on today. Um, the Missile Gallery is a special place to me, personally and professionally. Uh, as many of you know, both my dad, um, Lieutenant Colonel Bill Lamb, uh, Air Force retired, and my older brother, uh, Steve, um, Lieutenant Colonel Steve Lamb, uh, Air Force retired, both served uh, wonderful careers in the Air Force. My dad was a missileer. I was born at Malmstrom Air Force Base when my dad was sitting alert with the, with the Minuteman II. Um, so I can remember my dad bringing us to the museum as, as we spent many different um, 
duty stations at Wright Pat and bringing us past the Atlas um, when it was outside, when it was dressed as Santa Claus. Um, and I can also remember my dad um, bringing our kids here and talking, walking through this cathedral of missiles, which now has an Atlas rocket, uh, and describing the work that he did during his active duty days to our children. Uh, and that memory uh, is even more special to me now as my dad deals with some pretty significant health issues and some cognitive issues. But I can reconnect with those fond memories because I'm here. Uh, I can also reconnect with those fond memories because the restoration team graciously invited me to join them for one of their trips uh, up north to see the Atlas as it was being restored. And that invitation on their part allowed us to engage the donors um, that supported this project, but it also allowed me to talk to my dad in detail about what was happening with this restoration, and I know that meant a great deal to him. One of the other reasons um, that I find my work so rewarding is that this um, project is an example of how the relationship between the museum and the foundation has grown and changed in some very substantive and important ways in just the last several years. And the change that has occurred is that collectively we are now positioning donors to have a positive impact on the outstanding work that the museum is, is striving to accomplish. By that I mean our museum colleagues are conveying, here's what we would like to accomplish, here's why we would like to accomplish that, and then we, the foundation, are able to go out and communicate with folks about those desired outcomes, about that vision on behalf of the museum, and hopefully find um, individuals and organizations to support projects. In the instance of the Atlas, um, the anonymous donors, uh, who, as Mr. Tillotson graciously acknowledged, um, provided the, the Delta to get the project fully funded, had a relationship with the company that built the Atlas. So when Mr. Tillotson spent some time um, interacting with the donors at our request, um, he described what this project would literally look like, why it was important, how the museum wanted to tell the story of the United States Air Force and NASA working together to put objects into space and what that did for our country. And then we, the foundation, came in behind that and talked about um, the funding that was needed. And the donors very graciously agreed to support the project. These donors um, have also supported other projects at the museum. So the Kettering Models project is fully funded by these same donors. And that is reflective of just a portion of their overall donations that they have made in support of the museum. And if the museum and the foundation were not talking together and working together the way that we are, we would not have the opportunity to celebrate an occasion like this. Um, so my congratulations to Mr. Tillotson, my congratulations to all of my museum colleagues that have been a part of this project. Um, your work put this into play, uh, and, and we, the foundation, are very excited about that. In my opinion, the type of teamwork that I just described is really the basis for the future of the way that the foundation and the museum will work together to accomplish great things. Uh, so I'm delighted um, to be able to uh, acknowledge this magnificent uh, rocket. I'm excited about the possibility for um, future conversations with other donors who are interested in learning about what this gallery will convey um, when the, the um, the gallery redesign uh, takes place, uh, and again, to all those that have been involved in this project, uh, my congratulations. Thank you. I'll turn it back over to JC. All right, thank you, Chris. All right, thank you, Mr. Tilton. All right, well, uh, like the boss mentioned, there's only going to be two speakers, so I don't want to drag this out too much longer. Uh, so I will uh, let you guys know here, uh, as we conclude today's event, we invite you to take a closer look at the newest addition to the Missile Gallery. On behalf of the National Museum of the United States Air Force, I'd like, like to thank you all who have joined us today, and have a great Air Force Day. That's all we have. <laughs>